I'm Silvio and this is part 5 of my Christmas Village 2020 full tutorial series. Because you are smart and I know that you are, you already figured out that if I closed my last video without showing you any kind of improvements to the village, I will start this one the same way. And you are absolutely right. But it is the last time it will happen, I promise. At least I will try. In the next few minutes you will see a little twist happening just before starting the first test of the river and the waterfall with real water, finally. And it took me around three hours to face that little twist. Anyway, I will then paint the boat and the river and the waterfall before shaping the waterfall. The final assembling, and maybe a little surprise, will then end this video. All in theory, naturally, because it seems I am unable to follow any kind of script. Unfortunately, I just let the pump fall to the ground. It's now broken in different pieces and the engine doesn't start anymore. I've just uh, tested it. Obviously, I've promptly deleted the scene because you don't have to hear any of my bad words or any of my uh, swearing. But I have a spare pump. Not exactly the same model as this one that uh, I know it is well suited for uh, my project and that I have tested last year when I was trying to find the best suitable pump uh, for my little waterfall. But it is a powerful pump anyway. It can pump up to 800 liters per hour. The old one was capable to pump 1000 liters per hour. So I still don't know the outcome of the switching from this pump to the new pump, to the spare pump. But I will find uh, very soon. Let's go ahead with the new pump. Finally, the riverbed is completed and it has a small jump in here. Then I've also completed the waterfall and it has one, two and three jumps. And each jump has its proper mini lake here, here and here. I've also completed the, the waterfall source as you have seen me doing during last session. And by the way, I let the glue dry for eight entirely hours because I need to be certain that the water will flow only through this opening and not leaking all over the sewers. Then I've connected the new pump and secured the, um, the tube to the main uh, container. Obviously, all is absolutely awful to see, to watch. Nothing is glued together, nothing is uh, uh, shaped yet. But I just need to check if the system can work like this, because I don't know yet. And I also need to verify if the main container, the big container, has initially enough water to start the system. Because I will need the water for two sections of the riverbed, for each jump of the waterfall, for the waterfall source, for the tube that will pump up the water from the main container to the waterfall uh, source. The main container can hold up to 4.8 liters of water. But let me just remind you that from this point down to the lake, I will need half a liter of water to fill up the path. Then I have the rest to fill up before even thinking to start pumping the water from the lake 
to the main container. Otherwise, the mini pump will suffer from the lack of water and will burn. So you may understand why I'm literally frightened, why I'm scared to death right now. But let's check the system for the first time. With this cable on the uh, left, I will switch on the pump from the main container. And with this other cable on the right, I will connect the AC adapter that will switch on the mini pump from the lake. In the system, I have a total of 5 liters of water at the moment. So, let's uh, move a little bit the camera up, like this. Hope you can see and uh, let's go on with the first try and let's hope not to leak all over the place. Let's go. The water is coming down. Now I can start pumping up the water from the lake. And the pump in the main container is still is already suffering from lack of water. As you can see, up the three jumps are going correctly. You hear the small pump here making some sort of small some sort of noise. I just need to uh, fill up the main container with just some more uh, water. So let's stop the main container pump. Not bad for a first test. I think I have had no leaking at all. Let's uh, just check a little bit around. Do I have uh, water leaking? No, I have absolutely no water leaking. I've just uh, I've just uh, added in another liter of water to the main container and uh, let's see what will happen now. So, even the second test has gone essentially well. The mini pump has stopped making awful sounds. Let me just remove some little pieces of styrofoam from the water, otherwise uh, the pump will uh, suffer. So now some water is still coming down to the lake, as you may have seen. Now with the, the uh, main container uh, almost full of water, you have seen that the water flow was too intense this time. I will try to reduce the, uh, the water flow uh, and then let's go again with another test. The main container is almost full of water. The pump is set to its minimum flow. Let's go ahead. And here I am again, just two or three hours after the sequence you have just seen. I knew that in theory the system composed by the waterfall and the river should have worked correctly. I just needed to refine some more my calculation. And here is the result. I've removed the old lake 
and I've replaced the container with this new one that can hold half a liter more of water. I also replaced the mini pump. The old mini pump is still among us and it, it can pump up to 240 liters of water per hour. The new one, obviously same type of mini pump, identical to this one, can pump up to 280 liters of water per hour. And it also has four small section cups that prevent any kind of movements. The question, why haven't I used this pump from the beginning? Why have I wasted so many time trying to fix the pump to the lake with the moldable plastic? Simply because this kind of pump has no regulation. It can pump up 0 or 280 liters per hour. And I thought that 280 liters per hour was too much, causing the lake to empty too soon and the pump to burn. But I've attached to the pump this small voltage regulator or motor speed control if you prefer. I just need to find the correct setup and the pump will uh, pump up the correct flow of water from the lake to the main container. Just let me try it. I will start the uh, main pump and uh, I will wait for uh, the water to reach the lake then I will start uh, the mini pump from the uh, lake here we go and the touch down just let the water fill up a little bit the uh, lake then I will uh, switch on the mini pump here we go. The water is flowing down without problems from the waterfall and each of the three jumps and reach correctly the lake. The lake isn't filling up quickly, so still the same level of water. The water is uh, constantly uh, flowing to the lake and the main container isn't emptying too quickly. The water level in the lake uh, is uh, stable, also the water level in the main uh, container. This is the correct uh, uh, setting for the uh, pump, for the mini pump. Let's have a look around. I have no leaking at all anywhere. Let's go and check the waterfall. Here we go with the waterfall. Okay, I have the mini jump here. No leaking around the mini jump, no leaking under the waterfall. All the three jumps are correctly uh, working. I have some more, uh, some uh, little water here here but I because uh, I just need to add uh, the glue down the, the this section I just need to glue all the panels together and have uh, some uh, small wall in here preventing the water from going uh, here but uh, I have no leaking around same problem here I have just some water spilling a little bit here I will add a small wall or a small piece of rock, I don't know yet. Just some heavy box to get in place, to maintain in place the waterfall because without gluing all the pieces together it will fall backward. But the water is flowing correctly from the source, 
the first jump is done, the second jump is done, the third jump is done, I have no leaking anywhere. So the system works finally correctly, just needed to do some more refinement to my calculation. Eureka! Now, I still don't know yet if the riverbed the path is uh, waterproof. I could have caused some holes in the panels when carving the path. So I need to waterproof the path and I will use a vinylic glue. A vinylic glue for wood. A water resistant D3 type of vinylic glue. I've said water resistant because the only uh, waterproof uh, glue is uh, a polymeric glue, a D4 type uh, of glue, but it is also very toxic. So I will say with uh, the, this uh, D3 type vinylic glue that is the most uh, um, water resistant glue on the market. I will probably use two or three layers of uh, glue all along the path waiting each time obviously for the previous layer to dry. Then I will uh, sculpt uh, the, the waterfall, I will try to model the waterfall and I will so paint the riverbed because it is unwatchable right now before adding a final layer of uh, water resistant uh, glue on top of it. So many hours of work ahead of me uh, but firstly I needed to stop the water and let the riverbed path to dry otherwise the glue will be ineffective. I will continue filming all the work I do but I will make uh, uh, comments just uh, from time to time because uh, uh, I will face just a simply a uh, process or maybe I will stop uh, if I face some difficulties.
around 8 hours after finishing all the paintings, let me have a quick recap. This is supposed to be a Christmas village. This is supposed to be a winter village, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. So each time I have a panel on top of the previous one, the height is becoming higher and higher. This means that uh, with each panel, the quantity of ice surrounding the river and the waterfall will be greater and greater. Now, I've applied for each of the five sections two layers of glue in order to waterproof all the path. Then I've applied uh, one layer of paintings using two shades of green, two shades of brown, some blue, some white, and of course uh, black and grey for the rock in the middle of the river. After all the paintings were dried out, I then applied two more layers of glue on top of them for two reasons. First reason, I needed to protect all the paintings against the washing of the water. Second reason, I wanted to already have a little water effect on the river and also some a little icy and shiny effect. Here we go with the, the first section. Let me just adjust a little bit the uh, camera. I hope that uh, you will see it correctly even if uh, we have uh, a lot of reflections. Anyway, uh, you can see clearly both the shades of uh, green and brown, some blue here and there, some white. Here we have uh, a great quantity of white because I needed to simulate uh, white uh, water in proximity of uh, the jump. I obviously started with uh, lighter shades uh, uh, near uh, the border, then uh, uh, deep uh, shades, uh, then dark shades if you prefer, in the middle of the river when uh, the deep is supposed to be uh, greater. And here we have all the effects I don't think uh, it is uh, too bad and uh, down there we have uh, uh, the little rock in the middle of uh, uh, the river and the white is supposed to represent obviously some washed rocks but also all uh, the icy parts. Here we are from another angle and we go from another angle okay Let's go ahead. Obviously, all the sections uh, lack some uh, vegetation that I will obviously add uh, lately. So this is the first, uh, the first section. Let me have it there. Now the second section. Uh, oh, and by the way, um, the carving technique I've used and uh, the paintings helped. Uh, for sure to stand out uh, the bottom of the river. Uh, I have uh, not a bad effect at all, I think. It's my opinion at least. Okay, here we have again some, uh, uh, some white uh, water here, some ice, some shades of uh, blue there because uh, uh, water sometimes become uh, blue depending on the sun reflection on top of it and uh, we have here all the white and all the green and brown uh, shades same technique as uh, before hope it can be seen uh, in a correct way and I hope that it is uh, watchable I don't know yet. Okay, now the third section. Here we go with the third section. 
here I added some more uh, white, as you can see, um, between uh, gray and white because the ice is starting to form uh, quite uh, frequently. And uh, we have uh, shades of uh, uh, green and brown without any blue this time. Here we go, hope you can watch it correctly, also from this angle where I have applied some, oops, I can't, okay, now a little bit better. The fourth section where uh, the eyes uh, has become quite uh, white and I've added uh, more white, obviously and then some shades of uh, green and brown and I forgot uh, an important thing uh, just uh, let's try to hear the difference between the panel of the sounds uh, and ear it sounds like uh, plastic uh, like plastic here it sounds like uh, um, like a panel, like a styrofoam panel, but here it sounds like a plastic. Let me do it near the mic, it's better. Plastic sound effect, panel sound effect. Plastic, panel. I think that the uh, two layers of glue added on top of it will help correctly. Uh, the water flow and the waterproofing the panels and uh, something more maybe. And finally the last section, the fifth section, here we go with the fifth section, obviously a lot more of white because we are almost on top of the mountain and it's freezing up there. So uh, almost uh, mm, over 30% of uh, uh, white here and some uh, green and some uh, brown uh, shades as uh, always here we go hope you can see it uh, from every angles correctly okay and this was uh, the fifth section obviously uh, the water for source uh, isn't painted yet because it is a little, uh, a little too risky to paint it uh, now. I will do it uh, lately. Now, let me uh, replace uh, each, uh, each section where it belongs before doing another quick test with uh, the water. Then, if all goes well, I will start shaping the waterfall before doing the final assemblings where I need to glue each panel on top of the previous one. All the five sections are now back in place where they belong. Let's have this final test with the paintings and the waterproofing both done. The water flow is uh, once again stable. The lake isn't filling up too quickly and the main container isn't emptying too quickly. So it's stable. The pump is doing correctly its work. The pump in the main container also. I don't think I have any leakings anywhere. Let's go and have a check around, but I don't think uh, we have any leakings at all, no leakings uh, anywhere I think, no leakings here, let's have a look near the waterfall, here we don't have any leakings. absolutely no leakings and even on the waterfall I have 
no leakings. The water is flowing down correctly through the water source and all the mini lakes and the riverbed seems perfectly waterproofed. As you can see the water is flowing correctly into the uh, river. Okay, that's the final test I think. I don't have any water leaking there or there. Sorry, you haven't seen. No leaking water here or spilling water here. Not even there. Okay, no water is leaking from anywhere. I think this time it's the uh, good time. And once again I have to make the outro without completing all I had planned for this fifth part of the tutorial. But having managed to get both the waterfall and the river working correctly after the leaking I had, it is already a huge achievement. And believe me, the leaking was a serious leaking. From now on, all will be very simple, starting from the shaping of the waterfall and the little surprise you will see first thing with the next part of this tutorial series. Please don't forget to subscribe and give thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and if you wish, see you next time.